Hi there. Um, with the ICP brochure now released, I thought I'll take the time to go through the brochure page by page and highlight the things that I think are really important for our students. I also want to say a few words about why I rate the ICB so highly as a good way of improving your studies, especially if you're already working um, and you have to study part-time or study from home. Cool. So um, I'm just going to show you every brochure page, <laughs> talk through it, some uh, obviously more important than the others. So, you know, um, there's the uh, cover of the brochure, you know, telling you it's for this year and the, and the start of next year. Um, moving on to the, the first page, why the ICB? Moving on to the first page with, uh, with real information, this kind of starts uh, talking to um, what I love about the ICB. If you don't have matric, uh, you can be accepted on the program. Um, you need to have at least a grade 10 pass. Uh, if you have a grade 11 pass, you can start a little bit higher up. Um, but the idea is to cater for people who don't finish school or well, if you finish school, you can of course still do the program, um, but very accessible. You can study it uh, full-time in classrooms. You can study it part-time. You can study it um, via distance learning. That's what we do. The NQF levels you can see are from, from three to six. I've made a separate video about NQF levels. Um, as you might know, NQF level four is your matric academic level. So you can see the program starts a step below matric level. It takes you up to matric level academically, and then it actually takes you um, beyond matric level up to NQF 5 and even NQF 6. Um, there's lots of subjects to choose from. You'll see it's mostly in the area of accounting, business communication, and office administration. And as you might know, uh, it's specifically office administration and specifically bookkeeping and accounting are scarce skills in South Africa. So they're the kind of skills that uh, significantly improve your chance of getting a job. Cool, going on to page three, um, you can see the, the program and the phases uh, of how you're gonna study is explained there. Um, you, you do your assignments, you do a test, you do more assignments, you do a test, you work yourself up to an exam, and we're gonna talk about exam opportunities just now. But I think it's helpful to understand how the learning process works. Of course, you'll see it also talks about digital POEs. A POE is a portfolio of evidence. Um, you basically create a portfolio of work that's, that's evidence that you've done specific work, um, specific assignments, you submit it electronically, and it forms part of your final mark when you write your exam. You need to make sure that you've submitted your portfolio of evidence, of course, before you go and write the exam. Uh, cool. Moving on to page four. Um, yeah, <laughs> I wanted to say a few words of this, but it's in the brochure. You know, high quality learning experience, flexible, many different uh, ways of studying from classroom to part time to distance learning to weekend learning. Study at your own pace. Uh, and certainly that links to the many exam opportunities, which I think we'll get to a little bit later on in the brochure. Um, every level that you pass, you're gonna get your certificate. So you're gonna do four subjects, get a certificate, do four more subjects, get a certificate. Personally, I like that model because you get rewarded for the work you do um, in, in bite-sized pieces. You don't have to study for two, three years and right at the end, if you pass everything, then you get a single qualification. Okay, the, the program, of course, is accredited. It's registered on the NQF. Cool, going on to page five. Um, it's talking about recognition of prior learning. So if you're a slightly older student, you've done other studies, you've done work that relates to this area of study, you can apply for the ICB to recognize the subjects you've passed somewhere else to recognize the work you've done and that might get you exemption from some of your subjects. Uh, of course, at the bottom of that page, you'll see, you know, the ICBs linked to the ICBA. It's they linked to the South African Institute of uh, Tax Professionals. They linked to SABA. They linked to the International Association of Bookkeepers. They linked to the International Association of Accounting Professionals. These are all professional memberships uh, that you could um, gain entry to once you've passed your ICB program. Cool, moving on to page six. 
Um, Mackie is really the, the process, um, the online process where you're going to submit your portfolio of evidence. Um, there's all kinds of requirements. You must, you know, submit your ID so you can be verified. That's where you find your online exams. Uh, important information once you're busy studying. Um, call page seven is just talking about uh, recent improvements in the online system. Um, you can have a look there. Page eight, uh, academic changes from last year. The, the ICB is phasing out some streams. So you can see what's being phased out. You can see some programs are now moving towards uh, expiry date uh, a few years from now. So that's worth looking at. Mm. Cool. Then on page nine, you're starting to get the detail uh, of the courses, of the subjects. There you can see all the financial accounting program uh, um, qualifications. There's four qualifications and inside each you can see the subjects. At the bottom, you can see the actual qualification you get at every level. You can see the NQF level names. You can see the SACWA ID numbers. I like seeing this kind of detailed information about the course. Um, if we go to page 10, you're seeing the same kind of information for the business management program, for the office administration program. And I think this is where, if you're a prospective student, you need to really dig into all this information. Make sure you understand how it works. Um, make sure you, 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 you understand what the subjects are uh, so that you're well informed uh, when you start the program. Cool, on page 11, we get to, we get to the um, paper-based exams, meaning you're going to go to a, a center and sit an invigilated exam. You can see lots of exam opportunities. Um, on page 12, you'll see all the online exam opportunities and something the ICB introduced this year is that you can actually shift between. You can, for your first subject, you can decide to sit and write a paper-based exam. For your second subject, you can choose to do an online exam. The, the only requirement is that, you know, for a specific subject, once you've chosen paper-based or once you've chosen um, online, you need to stick with that option for that subject. But if you add up the paper-based exam opportunities, there are four a year. If you add to that the four online exam opportunities, you can see that you can truly study as fast as you want. Um, there's, there's lots of exam opportunities. You're going to study, you're going to try an exam. If you struggle, if you fail, you know there's an, another exam opportunity coming up quite quickly. Um, I quite like that in comparison to programs where you study for six months or you study for a year before you write your first exam. Um, you know, I call systems like that uh, uh, kind of very much win loons win a call a system where you write only one exam at the end of the year, a win-lose system. You study the whole year and it's all just gonna come down to that one exam. Whereas with the ICB, you can write your exam. If you fail, sure, that's not nice, but you can immediately register, register to rewrite that exam two, three months later. Um, so struggling with a specific subject doesn't mean it delays your whole uh, career. It doesn't mean you delay your whole study plan. Um, yeah, that's about it. Thank you very much.